<laughs> Hello! Welcome back to Gloomhaven Lore! Um, allergies. Yes, spring is in full swing in Indiana. And so I'll try not to be too sniffly, but I got them allergies. Alright, so today we're going to talk about humans. I know, right? Boring humans. But humans are not boring. Humans are interesting too. Right? So humans are sort of the ubiquitous race in Gloomhaven. They're sort of everywhere, dominating everything. But that wasn't always the case, right? So like hundreds and hundreds of years in the past, they were sort of huddling in caves. Um, really sort of unknown in the world, but then they sort of emerged and started building societies and then they just started growing and growing and expanding until everyone else was mad at them, or at least, you know, the Inox and the Vermlings. But they made peace eventually, kind of, with all those races, and now here we are, and we're all dominated by humans, and humans are varied and interesting, right? So you've got your bandits and your cultists and your normal people, your bakers, your candlestick makers, I don't know. Uh, and you've also got your scoundrel, right? Who is a human, but she's like, you know, kind of like a bandit, right? She just runs around stealing people's money and stabbing them in the back because who needs honor when you're a scoundrel? It's all about just doing it the quick and efficient way. Why kill them when they're looking at you and you can stab them in the back? So, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else to say about humans? I mean, you know what they look like. They're humans. I mean, they look like me, right? So, okay, that was done. All right. <laughs> so, we could talk about the scoundrel. The scoundrel is great. The scoundrel is super great. Um, her one drawback is that she only has nine cards to start with, which is more than the Spellweaver, but the Spellweaver gets all her cards back once. The Scoundrel has to make it through the entire dungeon with just nine cards, which means she has to be very careful about the cards that she uses for her X powers. Because if she uses those too early, well, then she can get exhausted really early. Of course, that's not always bad. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're making that difference in the battle, it still might be important to throw away a bunch of X cards to do like a huge amount of damage on a boss or something. Um, but yeah, you just have to be really careful and, and be sure to, to only use that X card when you, you know it's gonna make a big difference. So her sort of, Standard attacks are uh, single out and flanking strike, right, which are an attack three, but then you get bonus damage when adjacent, or when your target is adjacent to your other allies, right? So as it says, it's sort of like a flanking attack, um, right? So there's no like basic rules for flanking in the game um, like you might find in some other tactical games, but this is sort of the... Uh, way that that's implemented is that the scoundrel specifically can do stuff, cool stuff like that. Uh, single out also has like really cool power on the bottom. It's one of her most powerful abilities where she can, on her next four attacks, also do a bonus damage on targets that are not adjacent to any of their allies. Um, and then you sort of get the combination of that with backstab, which is an X card which is a lot like sort of the combination of those two, right? So it's a single out top and bottom where you get bonuses for them not being adjacent to your allies and also not being adjacent, or they are adjacent to your allies and not adjacent to their allies. Um, so, you know, one thing you can do to just really pump out the serious damage, right, is then to also use Smoke Bomb, which is a one-time thing where it can double your attack when you're invisible. Right, so for instance, you could 
Uh, use the bottom of a single out to get you plus two on, on your damage. And then use a smoke bomb. And then backstab somebody. And so if they're not adjacent to any of their allies, and they're adjacent to one of your allies, you're getting all these bonuses. You get three, plus two, plus two, plus another two from that is nine. And then you double that, and so you're just doing base 18 damage. You pull like a times two modifier, that's like 36 damage. That'll like kill boss in a single hit. So, so yeah, Scoundrel can be pretty powerful when uh, set up to do so. So what else do we have over here? We've got Thieves Knack, which is pretty great. You know, just disarming a trap for two experience is always nice. And then of course, uh, an attack on the bottom, which we all know is, is really great. You know, anytime that you can make an attack on the bottom instead of a movement ability, that's just versatility. And so that's always useful. If you're already standing next to a monster, you just hit him on the bottom and hit him on the top and probably kill him. And then in the same vein, you got Quick Hands, which has a movement on the top, right? So it's a move and attack. It's also your main loot card. Right, what's really frustrating about this is that the loot is on the bottom. So typically you wanna like move before you loot. And so you're like, oh, I need to move on the top, but oh, my only move on the top is this card and I can't do both at the same time. Which one do I use? I don't know. So yeah, tough decisions. You got special mixture, which is your only heal ability, but it's also got one of your best movement abilities where you can move next to someone and then immediately poison them. So that sets you up for a nice big attack, right? If you had poisoned that person before you backstab them, then that's another plus one. So that's 10 times two is 20 damage. So that's even more damage if you get that poison in. Uh, you also got throwing knives, which are also great, right? That's your, your one ranged attack. And it's also your only attack that targets multiple things. Um, it's usually pretty good in combination with single out. Um, so if you can throw your knives at someone who's by themselves, you can get bonus damage from that. And then uh, we can talk about a few of the X cards. Uh, so Trickster's Reversal is situational, but it can be super powerful. Where you get attack two and then uh, you basically do twice as much damage as whatever their shield value is. So like on a really strong, heavily shielded enemy, um, you can basically just take them out in a single hit. And that could be really helpful when fighting like flame demons or living spirits who are just really a pain. Uh, and then finally we've got Swift Bow, which is the controversial card. <laughs> um, the bottom power, move four, loot every hex you enter with this action is just really strong. Um, it's a little too strong, so it was reduced in the latest printing, so it's now down to move two, which you might think, oh, that's terrible, I can only move two, but like, the ability to like pick up coins as you move is just really powerful. So on its own, it's like not that great, but just given the fact that it has an extra uh, part to it, um, it's a really good candidate for uh, doing things like, you know, enhancing it, like pay 30 gold and you could turn into a move three, which then becomes like really pretty good. And you can also use like boots of striding, turn into like a move four or a move five, and you get to still loot all the coins that you move through. So it can still be really powerful even though it's been reduced. But yeah, it becomes a little more situational and not necessarily like the best card in your deck. So, that's that. Um, hope you enjoyed learning more about the scoundrel. She's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you just gotta be careful about not playing those X cards too, too quickly and just run around and do a bunch of damage and try not to get killed because you're always in the middle of battle. So, and you're probably going back first. So, monsters like to attack you, so you gotta be careful about that. All right, well, that's all I have to say, so I'll see you next time.